I've just come back from the center, the waiting room, Torah and Gospel Center in Sheer Norway. And uh, I'm on the way I met a sister who had begun to read my latest book, The Tenth Witness. Now this book cannot be obtained uh, from the internet, but anyway, I felt I should read a letter written to the leadership of Norway to the kings, to the rulers, to the bishops. It, uh, true, it has not been uh, delivered, but I'm going to put it out into the earth by reading it to you guys, and pray that you will pray with us for Norway. We want Norway to be saved. We want your Lord to pour out His Holy Spirit on the king and the royal family. We want Him to pour out His Holy Spirit on the bishops of the Church of Norway, on the priests of the Church of Norway, and on the people of Norway. So please uh, listen carefully and hear the vision and run with the vision. House of Prayer for Norway, Sheen Oslo and Oslo, Norway, October 6th, 2012, 982 years after Norway became a Christian nation, and 1042 years after Norway became a nation ruled by a Christian. Dear leader or saint, Yahwa be with you. Yahwa says, ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. This message is written to encourage the church to ask once again for the nation of Norway. In the light of prophetic words of judgment and blessing which hover over Norway, as reported by Reverend Emmanuel Minos, we feel an urgency to share with those who have the power to make a difference in this nation, future, the nation's future, some of the things the Holy Spirit has laid on the heart of the saints in this nation. You have positions of authority, whether as the royal family, judges, policy makers or civil administrators or spiritual leaders in the church and are now given an opportunity to know the will of Yahweh for the nation and to turn your hearts back to the God of your fathers. You who are leading the lights, the leading lights of this nation should in all intents and purposes be those who lead the nation in this greatly needed repentance. Norway, as we know, is a nation built on a gospel heritage. Norway has enjoyed, had enjoyed 982 years as a Christian nation, and we will celebrate our thousand year anniversary in the year 2030. It was Håkon den Gua, son of Harald Hårfager, who first sought to bring the nation to Christ, but did not succeed and died in 961. Olav Tryggvason tried to convert the land by force, but failed. He made many enemies. He fought with the cross on his soldiers' helmets. He was killed in 1000 AD and did not succeed to make the nation Christian. Olav Haraldsson came next. He was an iconoclast and destroyed the idols of Thor and Odin. Hallelujah! Even as now the secular government has now removed the evangelical Lutheran faith as the faith of this nation, so Harrelson removed the idolatry. He laid, up, uh, uh, he laid up rules as to how the people should live in a Christian state, even as Christian rules have, have now been abandoned in the present time, for example, in marriage and abortion. They are marrying man to man and women to women and they are allowing abortion free willing. freely. Okay. He became unpopular and had to escape the land. When he left, the Danish king Knut ruled with a hard hand and famine and starvation came on the land. Thus they chased away the Christian king because he was enforcing Christian justice and famine, starvation and a tyrant came on the land. Olaf Haraldsson returned with an army of 3,000 and died in the war which followed. However, after he died, amazing wonders began to happen with his dead body and with those who were around him. People were healed of injuries, blind people received their sight and sick people were healed. The signs and wonders caused an investigation into them by the church. They opened his grave and found that his body was as handsome as the day he was buried. It should have rotted and been very dusty. Through the testimonies of these signs and wonders, more people confessed Jesus as their Lord and believed in the, His resurrection. 
He became all of the holy in all churches from east to west. Thus it was Harold the Fairhaired who first united the land. His son was the first Christian king and signs around dead all of the holy that completed the work. He tried to bring the Christ to the Norwegians, but it was after the wonders that the Norwegians really came to Christ. From 1030 to 2030 will be 1,000 years of a Christian Norway. Let us make sure we have something to celebrate. When the faith of Norway was in a low place, then Yahuwah raised up his servant Hans Nilsson Hauger to become a light for the nation in Christ Jesus. He became what some scholars have called the prophet of freedom and much of Norway today has been impacted by the revival which happened under the ministry of that servant of Yahuwah. He was raised up just before Norway received its independence from Denmark and they received their independence in the midst of the revival and his ministry which lasted from April 5th, 1796 to 1824. Now it is time for us in Norway to listen carefully to the words of King Olaf, prophetic and important as they are. Norway has a thousand year Christian heritage. It is the believers and the church's responsibility to ensure the gospel retains its position as the carrying power of this nation. I'll repeat what the Olaf V said. Norway has a thousand year Christian heritage. It is the believers and the church's responsibility to ensure the gospel retains this position as the carrying power of this nation. Hallelujah. I pray you guys will pray with us on this one in Norway. And now I will set out the prayer request, but I will do that in the next video. Yahweh be with you guys. In Jesus' name, pray for Norway. Amen.